Thanks for joining us on Behind the Spotlight. I'm Crystal Lampett here at the American Jazz Museum's Blue Room with a Kansas City native jazz icon, Bobby Watson. Thank you, Crystal. Welcome to the show. It's great to be on the it's show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, we're going to kick it off with your rendition of Billy Strayhorn's A Train. Yes. All right, take it away. Thank you. Watson with A Train. It's a classic. What a fun piece to play. It is. Uh, they, they say that uh, at any time during a 24 hour period, some musician in the world is playing A Train. Someone is playing it somewhere. That's I right. used to play the piano. Well, I uh, kind of do. Uh, and that was one of my first jazz pieces that I learned, oh, really? it was a very simplified version of A Train. I was like, this is fun. Yeah. This is good. It's cool now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bobby, you've had such a prolific career. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing right now. Um, besides um, uh, 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 co-directing the uh, jazz department at UMKC, I still travel uh, several times a year around the country and around the world. Um, you know, places like India, Russia, uh, Europe, of course, all, all around, up and down Europe. I'm in Italy a lot. Nice. And, uh, whenever I can. I like doing uh, clinics and master classes for the students at various universities around the co country. Oh, great. You're, you're, you're passing it forward. Passing yeah. it forward. Yeah. I mean, so where is your favorite place to perform? What, or is there a, a country, let's say outside of the States? Yeah. What's been your favorite country? Uh, my two favorite countries are uh, 
Italy yeah. and Japan. Okay. Yeah. So Italy for the pasta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great food, great audience, they're very artistic audience and the J Japanese are very passionate about yeah. the music. They're big, big jazz fans. You feel like a rock star when you're over there. Oh, I bet. So yeah. in Japan, do they watch you very quietly with rapt attention or can it get crazy there too? No, they, they, they watch very quietly Yeah. and they hold their applause until the end, then they explode. <laughs> oh, nice. I always wonder yeah. that because, you know, it is, it's a different cultural experience everywhere you go. Some places it's like crazy. Like here we are at the Blue Room right now, and I've seen this place get yeah. jumping. Oh, I mean, yeah. I've seen people get up and dance and go crazy and then other places, which is wonderful. Yes. You know, it's not that one, uh, one is better than the other. No. But other places, everyone sits very quietly and they're just listening so intently. Oh, absolutely. You, you, at first when I went over there, I, I was thinking they really wasn't enjoying it. When you hit that <laughs> last note. It's like, wow. They were holding their breath. They were yeah. waiting for you to, to finish. I mean, so where did you sort of get some of your, your style? I mean, watching you perform, it is such a unique experience. And, you know, watching your fingers and your moves, where did you pick up on some of your flair? Well, um, I grew up watching my dad play the saxophone uh, in church. Um, he was a pilot by trade and a, and a music musician as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I discovered Charlie Parker, of course, and then um, all the others that followed. And uh, I watched a lot of video and got a chance when I went to New York to see a lot of them back in the 70s when I moved there. So I would go out and watch them and sort of took a little bit from each one of them, Cannonball Adderley, Jackie McLean, and sort of uh, uh, the whole thing about jazz is, is learning to love your sound, love yourself. So once you fall in love with what you're doing, then you're able to take that and exploit it. You know? The rest just kind of follows. You just yeah. absorb it and it See yeah, it what comes you can through. bring out of it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I think key. we could all learn a thing or two from that. Yes. All right. Well, we will be right back with more Behind the Spotlight after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. I'm here with Bobby Watson, and we were just talking about all of your different experiences and how many different things you've done. Now, something that I've noticed that's very interesting about you is that you wear your neck strap mm -hmm. almost always. Yes, that's a habit I developed uh, yeah. when I was young. I, uh, it's part of my dress code. Yeah. So it keeps me knowing uh, what I have to do. There are times when I don't wear it, okay. you know, when I'm fishing or barbecuing. <laughs> <You're like Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like any extreme sports that it comes yeah, off. Yeah, it has to come off, you know. <laughs> but I usually, you know, I put it on and wear it every day. It reminds me of uh, what I should be doing. I like that. Yeah. That's it. It's like, you know, how some people have their goals kind of taped up on their mirror or something. So this is your visual reminder every day. Exactly. That you want to. So where, I mean, for me, when you've been in the game as long as you have, you know, 40 years, where, what's the end goal? Is there ever going to be a, a day that you're like, okay, I think I'm good enough now? No. Yeah. No, because music is endless. Mm -hmm. So, and when you open one door, uh, and go into another room, then there's a lot of stuff in there that you have to deal with, you know? Yeah. So one thing continuously leads to another, and you could live to be 200 years old and still be learning. And nev yeah, you could never learn at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. When did you first discover that you had a gift? Uh, well, my first public appearance was in church. Okay. And I played the Battle Hymn of the Republic on my clarinet, and it was my grandfather's church, and everybody said amen. And then uh, they asked me to play again. And so I still uh, uh, am amazed how my music touches people. And although uh, I have more of a command now of what I want to do to touch people with the horn, and that makes it more uh, efficient even if you're not feeling so good that day, you know, because every day is up and down, but yeah. I can keep this to a certain level where I can still be effective uh, and touch people and make them feel. 
Interesting. So you saw that reaction in people and it inspired you. Mm -hmm. I like that. So if you're, let's say, a newbie to jazz, uh, a listener or a viewer, and maybe you've never picked up a jazz record in your life, what is a record or an artist that you would recommend to someone who's just getting into it? Um, I would say any Miles Davis record mm -hmm. um, and um, Thelonious Monk. If I can uh, put it all in one uh, basket, I would say uh, any Blue Note record. Any okay. records on Blue Note or Prestige, Impulse, those are the main records that recorded most of the masters through the 50s and 60s. The, the Blue Note records is my first recommendation. Pretty much anything on Blue Note records is going to have a sound. No, you can't go wrong. And it's like a soap opera. You got to get into it, <laughs> and then you learn this character, and it leads you to another. Got to get attached to the storylines. There you go. <laughs> it's like America's longest soap opera. <laughs> it's, it's just a, a, a very long love story. You know? It is. It takes, yeah, it takes some time. I like yes. that. You got to develop it. Um, so outside of music, it's Saturday morning. What do you do in your free time? What are you looking forward to on Saturdays when you're not performing? Um, if I can, get to the piano and try to write some music or pick up the horn or go out back and uh, smoke some meat. I love smoking some meat. Smoking meat? Yeah. My, You're a true Kansas Indian. Oh, my grandfather and my grandmother, they had a, a, a barbecue place, several barbecue places. So we grew up with uh, around smoking meat. Nice. So it's in my uh, DNA. It is. Yeah. That's a cool little talent to have. And if we ever, you know, have a zombie apocalypse, you know how to smoke meat. Like That's you've, right. You've got some survival skills. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, speaking of those Saturday afternoons smoking meat, you've got, uh, you've had a 40-year marriage. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean... Music aside, that's an accomplishment, but also a 40-year marriage. Tell me about that. That's well, an accomplishment, too. Well, she's a special woman, my, my wife, Pamela, mm -hmm. and uh, she's a musician, too. She's from Kansas City, and uh, we went to Miami, did school down there, and then we, we, bo we both moved to uh, New York. And I have to say she's special because uh, uh, I'm just so thankful that she has stuck with me because... Uh, I traveled a, a, a whole lot when I was yeah. younger, and, um, and she raised our kids to respect uh, my profession and uh, kept them respecting me. You know, they say the hand that rocks the cradle mm -hmm. rocks the world. So she has been very, very uh, influential and inspiring to me uh, and to our children. You know, they still live in New York. They okay. were born and raised there, so oh, they're nice. New Yorkers. They're New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they love coming to Kansas City. They love Kansas City, yeah. but uh, after a couple of weeks, they're ready to go back. Well, 18th and Vine is out here, so we got we we got some street cred there oh, that's for right. sure. Yeah. So just quickly, marriage tips for 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 people out there who look up to you, admire your career, and and you know all that you've accomplished um, in your in your personal life as well. As a as a man, I would say. The two words you should learn is yes, dear. Dun dun dun! I want you to like play your horn to that <laughs> that's right, right there. That's yes. Right. Yep. Okay. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. And then Just don't fight it. And, and sleep <laughs> and sleep on it. Yeah. And you know, women have a plan. You know, yeah. they, they always say the man is uh, out front, but the women, uh, they're they have a plan, and yeah. uh, you, you should listen to your woman. You know. I like I like this. I like this. Yeah, we're all wheeling and dealing up here. And we're yeah, like, mm, okay, yeah, just, they are. Just you wait. Are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I had my daughter, I, like I, I realized how advanced uh, women are than, than my son. You know, when he came out the womb, my, <laughs> my daughter came out the womb f f much more advanced than my son there you did. Go. You know, well, we're true babies. You know, right. we're afraid of the dark. <laughs> When you get sick, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> trust me, I know a thing or two about that as yeah. well. I love it. I love it. Well, some good marriage advice from Bobby Watson himself. All right, well, we have a fun little segment called Your Four Favorites, mm -hmm. and we like to ask every artist <laughs> four questions. So number one is your favorite book. My favorite book, um, well, I can say the one I'm reading now is called Writings on the Wall okay. by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay, nice. And that's a very good book. Okay. And I love uh, all autobiographies. 
and biographies of musicians. Yeah, it's nice to be able to learn from others. Yes. I, do, I do enjoy those too. All right, and then your favorite movie. Tough mm -hmm. question. Uh, this may relate to your marriage question, mm -hmm. uh, but my, uh, one of my favorite movies is a dark comedy okay. uh, called The Stepfather. I haven't seen The Stepfather. What year? Oh, it came out in the 80s, and then they, okay. did, they did a remake on it. And it came it's a out dark later. comedy. Okay, I'm it's like, a dark comedy. is this a horror film? <laughs> uh, that's a dark comedy. Let's put okay. it like that, you know. And I like, you know, I like mysteries. I, I loved uh, the one with uh, Denzel. I love Denzel movies. Oh, I do love Denzel. Anything Denzel's in, mm -hmm. you know, I love, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, was it Glory. I think it was. That was okay. a great movie. Yep. You know, I like the uh, Men in Black series. You can't go wrong with Men you in know? Black. Yeah, yeah, those are fun. Those yeah. are always fun. But the older you get, the, the, the irony in The Stepfather is, is really, you got to ah. laugh at it. Okay, I'm going to check it out. He's, he, was, I'll tell you, he was looking for the perfect marriage. Oh, so that doesn't exist. <laughs> so no. we know how that's going to end. <laughs> it's give and take. It's give and take. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I like it. It's give and take. All right, we'll check that out. And then also your favorite artist, another tough question. Uh, musician? Musician. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne Shorter. Okay. Saxophonist, and I love Herbie Hancock, uh, pianist, and I like and Sonny Rollins. And the reason I like those folks is that uh, Sonny Rollins is like 80s, 88, 86, and uh, Herbie Hancock and Wayne, they're in their mid to late 70s, okay. and they are still th the goal that we, we we're trying to reach is their level. So they are they haven't become dated. They're still. Yeah. They're still they're the, timeless. They're timeless, you know. Yeah. They just keep growing, you know. Roy Haynes is another one. He's like 92. Wow. And he's still playing. No signs know? of stopping. No, it's, these are the people that are still the uh, artists that we try to strive to be like them and be on that level. Yeah, yeah. Always good to have role models. Okay, and last question, just quickly, your favorite fan story, or in your case, since you are a professor, could be your favorite student story. Oh man. Um, I can see you've got a lot of them in there. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll just quickly. I was with Art Blakey, and we were in Switzerland somewhere. And oh, in Switzerland somewhere. Yes, mm -hmm. and a, a, a small man. I don't know what the politically correct thing okay. to say. A Art wasn't person. that tall. Yeah. Art wasn't that tall himself. He was like five, one, and he was having. He used to wear hearing aids off the bandstand, and so this young, this young man, young person, comes up and he goes. He's looking up at Art going, Mr. Blakey, Mr. Blakey, we just love your music. I got all your records, you know, and everything. And Art's looking down at him going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then me and James Williams are standing next to him. He's going, uh-huh, thank you, thank you. Then he looks over at me and goes, I can't hear a word he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then goes back, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> when in doubt, smile and nod, right? That's it, show business, show business, you know. There you go. Take it till you make it. That's I love it. it. Wise words from Bobby Watson. Thanks for joining us on Behind the Spotlight. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. Bobby, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. We are here at the American Jazz Museum's Blue Room, and lucky for you, we have one more song. Now, this one is an original, yes. and it is called Blues for Peace. Yes. Okay, Thank it's you, all Crystal. you. Thank you. Thank you. 